Hello and welcome to this video where we will look at how to format or highlight a date from every other weekend. And we are going to look at two examples of how to do that. To be able to highlight the day of the week for every other week, we need to know if the date is the day of the week that we're interested in. And these cells in column B have been formatted to show the day of the week. That's not necessary. It's been done so that we can see the progress of our calculations a little bit easier. And remember, the day of the week we are interested in is the weekend, so that's Saturday and the Sunday. And the other thing we need to do is figure out what weekend it is. And I want to target the even number weekends. So the first weekend is number one, and I'm not interested, but second weekend number two, and I am. Three, no, four, yes, and so on. And we are going to look at two examples of doing this. The first example will work from the beginning of the year, so the first weekend of the year, the second weekend of the year, and so on, and we'll highlight every other date, every other weekend. And in the second example, I'm going to go from the start date in cell F3. So I've got a specified date, which might be the start date of a project or something in a business sense. And from that date, first weekend, second weekend, and let's highlight every other. Okay, so let's begin with the start of the year. And I'm going to build these formulas up bit by bit, and then we'll put them inside the conditional formatting rule to do the highlighting. So in column C, let's start off by identifying what day of the week it is. And to do that, I'm going to use a function called weekday. Weekday returns a number, one to seven, dependent on what the day of the week is. It wants the serial number, which in this case is cell B2, that first date. And when I put a comma in, it prompts me for a return type. And I'm going to use number two, where number one is a Monday, through to seven is a Sunday. So we'll be looking at number six and seven, because that is Saturday and Sunday in this scenario. Now when I close a bracket and press enter, it returns a number that represents a day a week. So we can see that cell B2 is a Thursday, therefore number four. Now if I went back into that formula, we're interested if it's six or seven. So after that formula, I'm going to type greater than five. If it's greater than five, it's therefore a six or a seven, and press an enter and copy and down, we'll identify that part of our formula. The Saturdays and the Sundays, again, the true, everything else gets a false. Now, as mentioned, the other thing we need to know is the week number of the year. And for that, if I demonstrate this in column D, we're going to use a function called week num, and this will return the week number of the year. The serial number once again is cell B2. And this time the return type, you see we've got a variation of different types here from system one, system two. This is something that you can check out in your own time. For me, I'm going to go for number two that a week begins on a Monday. And we're starting from the beginning of the year. So when I close bracket and press enter, I've now got the week number of the year. So we can see that for this Saturday and Sunday here, number 11 for a Sunday and number six for a Saturday. So the number six, the Saturday, the 8th of February, I'll be looking at that to be highlighted when I'm done because that's an even number. Whereas a Sunday, I'm not interested being number 11. Remember we're up to the alternate weekends every other weekend. So I'm going back into my formula to add in a function called is even because that's what we're looking for. If it's an even numbered weekend, close bracket, press enter, and I've now got my trues and falses. And I can see that for Saturday the 8th of February, I have a true and a true. And I want to know that if both of those are true, if it's an even number weekend and it's greater than five, then that's what I want. And that's going into a conditional formatting rule. So let's put this together in one column. Let me come into this first formula take a copy of what I've got there and into the first formula 
And we're going to wrap all of this inside an AND function. So there's my first logical test for the weekday, comma, paste in my second logical test, close bracket. And when I press enter, I'll copy that down and I'll delete what I've got in column D. And this is the formula that we want. So Saturday the 8th is a true. And as we look down, we can see another true on Sunday the 22nd of March. Everything else appears to be a false. It's not that easy to read with the trues and falses quickly, but we're going to put that in a conditional formatting rule. So let me come into the formula, select what I've got, and I'll copy that. Then I'm going to highlight all of my dates into home, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula to determine, and I'm going to paste in that formula. Then I can choose my format, and I'm going for a nice yellow, so that when I click OK, and I click OK again, it then identifies the two dates that I'm aware of. So those two dates occur on the every other weekend. Imagining that every other weekend we have some kind of commitment or something to be aware of, and we want it highlighted in this list of tasks. So that's one example going from the beginning of the year, but what about if you have a specified date like we have in cell F3? Well, let me begin by coming into my conditional formatting rules, and I'm going to clear the one I've got. And let's look at editing the formula we have. Now for this one, I need to work from that start date. So I'm going to write a formula here. And the first thing I'm going to get this formula to do is to subtract the start date in cell F2. And I'm going to fix that cell for when I copy it from the date in column B. So I can find out how many days there are. I'm putting those in brackets so that that calculation will occur first. And then I'm going to divide that by seven because it's seven days in a week. Now if I press enter, that will give me this horrid looking number determining how many days there are and divided by seven. So what we're going to do is round that number up. So back into the formula, we're going to add a function called roundup. So I can round that up to the nearest integer. So zero decimal places. And I'll run with that. We now have the number of weeks from that date. What we need to know is if that is an even number and then go with that like in our previous formula. So I'm now going to come in and take a copy of that formula. Going to add that to the previous one instead of week num. So instead of week num, I still want the is even, but here we've got a calculation for how many weeks rounded up. So if I confirm that, Let's get rid of this formula so it doesn't confuse itself. And we can see we've got a few extra trues in this case. So I'm now going to come into that formula, take a copy of that formula, highlight our dates, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and paste it in there. Choose a nice color, such as our yellow, and OK our way out. And there we have a few more dates now occurring in that weekend, where from the 4th of February, it was an even number. Now, obviously that start date in cell F3 could be changed and that would react to it too. So we've got two examples there of how you can identify every alternate date. It doesn't have to be a weekend like me, it could be every other Thursday or something that you want to identify either in a calendar or in some kind of schedule of dates for whatever reason that may be, so that it stands out to you. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.